Hi everyone, hope you're well. So for those of you who don't know, over the weekend was the 27th Ludum Dare programming game jam competition thing, which I was in. And after the 48 hour competition, everyone who entered then goes through a process where you can rate and vote on the other entries in the competition for 20 days before they announce the winners. So I've been playing all sorts of little games that have been created by people and I thought I'd share with you 10 of my favourites so far that I have seen. So these are in no particular order, just really good examples of short simple games made by one single person over 48 hours and the theme this time was 10 seconds as well, so it's brought up some interesting results. The first one here is called Duke Dashington by Adventure Islands, and it's he's a gentleman and a scholar, as you can see. This is a really cool, uh, very simple game, um, but very, very good execution, like really nice uh, pixel graphics, really cool sound. Um, and really interesting movement system which um, we'll just have a quick look at when we get into the game where you can dash in one direction at a time and you can't stop um, so you kind of have to work out which direction you want to go and a lot of its timing like a mistimed that there you have to fall a little bit further and then dash across at the right time so it becomes more about timing rather than your traditional platforming so it's a really nice little design and um, I said hi to the creator of this game over on Twitter and he said he was planning on making some more levels to this game as it's rather short as a competition entry at the moment um, each stage here is 10 seconds um, therefore adhering to the theme I'm not actually playing it properly at the moment while I talk to you um, but anyway the next game is a game called The Only One, and it's very interesting indeed. It's got um, a bit of a long introduction here that I'll try and get through quickly. Um, so obviously, if you play it yourself, you want to read all of this because it's relevant to the story. It's about an inventor who is uh, mourning the loss of his wife or girlfriend. And, um, and the beginning, this is kind of just the introduction where you're just looking at a lot of different things. And eventually, oh yeah, so once you've looked at everything, a pizza guy turns up and um, that kind of cues a couple of things. There's his teleportation ring that you throw down in anger that's meant to teleport you to your loved one, who is, however, now dead. So it starts to malfunction. So every 10 seconds, it teleports you back to this point. So you then have this game where, for example, here we're running check this gate this gate is locked okay and we can see three two one in the top left hand corner and we teleport back to the same spot um, so this time we'll explore over this way and we get a key and we can pick up the key and um, but time runs out again we don't have time to get back to the gate However, on our next iteration, uh, we can dash for the gate and open it. There we go. And we can dash into town and see what's going on and look around for a second. But we've run out of time again. And then, of course, the next time, just slowly, each 10 seconds, we can slowly decide what to do and dash to different parts and um, find things like we dash to here and it's your wife's parents who um who then lend you a walking stick that helps you walk faster so you can get a bit further every 10 seconds and it's a nice little adventure game that plays out like that with you gradually um getting more things and getting to getting further to different areas every every 10 seconds so it's a really interesting concept this game is called the legend of epicoros um i've already played it so you'll see my name has come up in a moment. Um, so there's this little, little introduction here. Uh, the first time I played it, it let me enter my name. But I can't play it again. Once you've played it, you can only play it once. And what's happening here is every single player who plays it gets 10 seconds and it's recorded. 
And then that's mm -hmm. what we're watching here. We're watching each player who has played this game for 10 seconds and 10 seconds only, that's all you allowed. Their adventure has been recorded and um, for, and then we can watch it back. And it's, it, this goes on for a while and eventually you get your turn on the end and you get to play for 10 seconds. So it's like a big um, collaborative thing where um, eventually the players will get to the end of the game. Bit of a siren in the background there. I just also need to put a public apology here because I'm actually the first player who took my turn and actually killed the character for everyone, which wasn't great, but it seems to just respawn instantly and um, hopefully helped out the game in a bit by demonstrating that it doesn't matter if you die. Um, so if you do play this game and you see the character called JC who dies, that was indeed me. Um, so this is an amazingly interesting concept. Um, I hope I've explained it properly. It kind of blew my mind. Uh, very interesting to see where it goes and it's fun to see everyone working together as a team kind of thing to try and complete the game. Right, this game here is called Barricade as you can see and uh, we're protecting some computers from some attacking robots. Um, WASD to move and arrow keys to shoot and it's very fast paced nice cute pixel graphics the lights go out every 10 seconds and all the robots stop moving gives you a chance to just break some of them up while they're not fighting back and then lights come on again for 10 seconds and uh, it continues until you wipe them all out for that stage and you go on to the next level so we can probably finish this level here nice uh, pixel so it looks like one more oh it's there there we go and then we get another stage and another level two entrances this time so you just get um, increasing waves so it gets harder and harder the 10 second element being lights going on and off so just a fun little shooty pixely platformer thing uh, self-explanatory really okay this game is called low battery it's extremely difficult you're only alive for 10 seconds um, and you have to complete the level in that time the targeting is automatic, you press an X to fire a little missile and blow stuff up and there's lots of jumping, um, wall grabbing and you need to run around and collect all these treasure chests and then get to the glowing red gem. So let's give it a shot, it is extremely difficult though, I don't think I'll manage it while talking. There's one chest, two chests, three chests, jump to the gem, just about did it by not finishing off all the enemies but it's extremely difficult that's just level one and it slowly gets harder than that it's a very fast paced game indeed but i think um impressive coding because it's so fast and clean and nice quality graphics and everything go and check it out if you fancy a bit of a challenge so this game is called 10 seconds before the world ends so as our character is telling us we can only move when time is stopped so we can move at the moment left and right but we've only got 10 seconds of time that we can pause and unpause before the end of the game now what happens is after we go through the environment we'll notice that the world really is ending in quite a dramatic way and there's all sorts of objects falling from the sky and stuff and you see here we can't get past this so what we need to do is we'll unpause time for a split second to let some of it fall down as so and then we can maneuver over it um, so it's all physics based puzzle platforming kind of thing um, so I wonder if we can jump up onto that maybe not maybe we can do it this way so you should get a general idea of what the game is like from this but you see time is a limited resource here and as you go on to the next level we still only have the 9.3 seconds left um, so that has to last us until the end of the game. Oh, I, I touched the explosion, so that wasn't good. Very cool concept that actually uses the theme of the game jam extremely well. This game is called Breathe, and you play an astronaut whose oxygen 
has run out, or is running out in 10 seconds, that's, that's the theme of the jam, um, and you have to, you're flying through space and you're collecting more oxygen, oxygen tanks to refill, refill your oxygen level to 10 again, so, and you've just got the one force field, so you can only hit stuff uh, once or twice, and have to wait for your force field to refill, so it's not the most um, original of games, I missed one oxygen tank, I better grab the second, okay, um, it's not the most original games, but it's just very nicely executed, I thought, very, just a solid little game, and it controls very nicely, good bit of fun. Another game that's simple and solidly made is this 3D maze game called Lost in the Dark, where you have this torch, you can find the exit, and then as you get further into the game, there's also some zombies that are in the maze that you can shoot with a pistol uh, if they're in the way between you and the exit, but you have very limited ammunition and all of the usual malarkey, so... Again, it's just not the most revolutionary game in the world, but just very solid uh, gameplay and uh, fun, fun stuff. Let's just shoot another one just to demonstrate. Not that we need to get that one. There we go. So that's a bit of zombie shooting maze torchlight action. Oh, and I've been eaten by a zombie. Okay, so second to last, we've got uh, this game called Crappy Doodle. This is me drawing here quickly. Um, it's basically draw my thing, but uh, mixed up with the 10 second theme of the competition, where you have to draw stuff in 10 seconds for other people to guess. And then once I've drawn a few things, actually, let's give it a face if it's a pumpkin. Oh, too late. Um, oh, you, I don't know, it's just draw smiley, shall we? Um, it's really hard to draw stuff in 10 seconds. Once I've drawn a few things, it will then let me guess things from other players. Um, and it will also tell you if anyone's guessed your stuff. So again, not the most revolutionary game. Obviously, um, copying a popular theme at the moment. Um, or building on a popular theme, which way you look at it. Oh, okay, is that a... Oh, I thought it was a dog or something, but I guess it's some kind of animal, isn't it? It's not... I was thinking giraffe, but it's not too few letters. Is that a chair? That's a chair. So not the most revolutionary game on the list, but again, just a bit of fun. And that's my TARDIS. Clearly that's a TARDIS. And finally, this is my entry into the competition. Like I said, this list is in no particular order. And you could see this as shameless self-promotion, but it is genuinely one of my favourite games because it's mine. So it's called Sui, which is Japanese for tree. I hope I said that right. Um, I spent a lot of time on the tree mechanic, which you'll see in a minute. Not so much time on the gameplay, which is collecting rain. And you can also collect colours um, to get a score bonus, but you have to collect the same colours several times. So we can collect three pinks and we get a three times score multiplier as we're collecting. But it's all very quick because you have to collect rain within the 10 seconds. And then the more points you get, the bigger the random tree will grow. So I spent a lot of time on the tree growing thing and kind of added in... The, um, this kind of game of sorts at the last minute, which is why it's not, not the best quality, but uh, check it out and I hope you get something out of it. Uh, people seem to enjoy it to an extent, so I hope you do as well. So that's my list. Um, I hope you enjoy at least some of the games on the list. I'll put all of the links in the description for you to go and check them out yourself. I hope you're well and I will see you later.